Hello, good day. My name is Joshua Welsh and I will be here for I will be taking you through the third pure math tutorial. Today we're starting on proofs. So there are there are three types of proofs. There are, what sorry, there are two types of proofs, direct proofs and indirect proofs. Now we just broke it down quick. These are the ones you'll be going through at Cape level. There are more, but you don't need to know those ones. So there are proof by indirect proofs, there is proof by deduction, and proof by induction. And indirect proofs is counterexample and contrapositive. These are the ones you need to know for exams. Now we, we will be starting with proof by deduction. Now, but before we do that, let's just go through the proofs structure. All proofs have a pro, uh, proposition, a body, and a conclusion. Now the thing is, direct proofs, conclusions, are derived directly from their propositions. Spelled this wrong, but it's propositions. Propositions, right? Now what does that mean? Now let's go through the first example in proof by deduction. This upside down A, this means for any. So this is saying, for any value of B and C, where B and C are both real numbers, then B plus C plus minus C is equal to B. Now we know this is true. The C should cancel out and we'll get B as the answer. But how will we prove this? The first thing we need to do is we need to say that B plus C will give me a real number. And that there exists, remember this from the action. So this is a closure property we just, just showed here. And then this is now the, um, what is this? The inverse, the add inverse, I believe. So that there exists a number called negative C which is also a real number. Sorry about this, it's kind of hard to use a mouse to do this. Anyways. So now we're saying that B plus C plus C my plus minus C does in fact give me a real number. So all of this, we haven't even reached like actually proving it yet. All we're saying now is that this is a real number, this is a real number. So the whole, the whole equation will give me a real number, which we know to be true, because well, not that we know it to be true. We do know it's true, but we know that at the beginning they say b is a real number. So this whole equation must be equal to b, b, which is a real number. So we're just making sure that it's correct. We're explaining that it is true. Next, we have to use the associative rule, the associative law. So remember how the associative law induced the brackets. Now we're going to change how the brackets look, and we're going to say B plus bracket C plus minus C, close brackets, is the new equation. So this is the first actual step in the SPNR proof. We're treating this. Now, some people might be getting confused because they're saying, wait, but the associative law didn't use two brackets. The associative law didn't have two brackets in it. It just had this it just had one pair of brackets. And how can we use it with these with now four with now two pairs? What treat this? This negative x bracket as just negative c. So like we use the brackets because we don't want the plus and negative right next to each other because that might get confusing because you will just your brain will automatically should automatically say well a plus right next to a minus will give me a minus but that's not that's getting ahead of yourself here. So what we do is we put it in brackets 
and we treat it as a num as a number. Oops, erase too much. So this could also be read as another way to write this is b plus c bracket plus minus c, which looks a bit closer to the associative law. And then we're just moving the brackets around to say b plus now c plus minus c. So this should look a bit closer to the associative law, but because there's no brackets around the negative c, it can get a, it can look a bit messy. So that's where we use the extra pair of brackets to can to um, close off the negative sign. But so it is the associative law. So you don't have to write it in the test, but what you could write next to it is the associative law. Yeah, so associative law. That's what we used here. Then we use the add, in, add identity because we know that this will give us zero. So what we're saying now is the add identity. Oh, wrong pen. Color. The add identity is saying b plus zero would give me p. And that's it. Then, then we just say therefore, at the end, we say therefore b plus c plus minus c is equal to p. And look at that. It wasn't hard. It was just you had to go step by step in explaining it. So let's just go from the top. There exists, wait, no, there exists. For any value, for, let me get the view first. For any value of b and c, where b and c are real numbers, then b plus c plus minus c is equal to b. This is known as a preposition, the proposition. This is what you're trying to prove. And remember we said that direct proofs, um, what is it? Go back down here. Direct proofs conclusions are derived directly from their proposition. So, this is a pro this is a proposition. So this is how we're going to direct. This is how we're going to prove that this is true or not. First thing we do is we have to check and see if they're real. We're well, not check and see if they're real. We have to say that they're real. That they're going to give me a real number. So this is a closure. This is closure, and this is the add inverse here, yeah, add inverse. We're just saying that that b plus c is give, will give me a real number, and then there exists the number negative c, which also will give me a real number. And then we put it all together in a in a, in a simple line, so we could start doing the other using the other rules. So we, now that we have b plus c is a real and there exists the number negative c which is real we say b plus c plus minus c is a real number after that we go using the associative law we say okay let's move the brackets around so we have b plus c plus minus c close brackets this will give me zero so what we'll end up with is b plus c point b plus zero is equal to b, and then we just put, and that's it. Then we have to just end with the our conclusion is a preposition. So we're saying therefore b plus c plus minus c is equal to p, which is true, and that's how we do it. It seems pretty straightforward. So, but let me just give you one. Let me give you one to try on your own. So, if you think this is pretty straightforward and you think you understand it pretty well, there's there's this question you could try. Um, let me just put a number two. Put this in green. For any 
value of u where u is a real number then u times 0 is equal to sorry this looks let me just make my u looks like we use so u times 0 is equal to 0 times u which is equal to 0 now I encourage you to try and do this on your own if you next video I will go through it <coughs> And I will do like two more, and then that should be it for direct proof. They're not hard, but they can be a bit, not confusing, but they can be very straightforward. <coughs> they can be very straightforward to the point where you might miss a certain part of it and lose a mark. So you need to know, you need to explain every little piece of it. And well, I hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned till next episode.